Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about how absurd MTG financiers are. And here we have a private transaction between Rudy and Chris. Chris is a famous game developer. He's well known, educated, and wealthy. He decided to buy this Lotus knowing its entire background. And the person who's posting this bad stuff about Rudy, he feels like he's the guardian of the Lotus. The dude 2488, he's the one spreading rumors and accusations without any proof. I talked to Chris for tw over 25 minutes and we reached an amicable resolution on the card. It won't be coming back into circulation, and if it ever does, he will take the necessary steps to make sure future buyers don't get duped. Chris is a really good guy, and this post should not change any opinions about who he is. Chris is the guy who bought the Lotus. The guy who did not buy the Lotus for $6,000, which he could have made money from, he is now on a rampage against Rudy, and using... Okay, so let's imagine I have a card. I try to sell it to you for $6. You decide not to buy it for $6. Fine. Then you spread accusations about me online on Reddit. And of course, Reddit is like, oh, yeah, you're right. This has been upvoted many times. And it is not the first time, as you can see from the numerous updates. Who is this guy who is the guardian of the Lotus? Every Lotus has to be approved by this random dude who may or may not have the money. Do you know how many times people approach me, my business, and say that they want to hire us and they do not? And they just waste our time? I think what happened here was Rudy identified this guy may or may not have the money. And he is wasting his time because the price was good. The price was good. Fake signature, real signature, no signature, the price is good. And he sold it for more money. $4,000 more to someone who's wealthier, possibly smarter, and more known in the community, who has no interest in selling the Lotus. And he calls the dude, talks to him for 25 minutes, confirms that the guy is never going to sell the Lotus, and then ends it by saying, oh, you know, you shouldn't discriminate Chris. He's a good dude. This is a private transaction between two individuals. Rudy sold a Black Lotus to Chris. How is this random third party person even involved in this? And why is he calling the buyer? And then concluding that hmm, Chris is a good dude. The buyer's a good dude. I approve of this sale. Like that's pretty much what he said. He approves of this sale. Who this is the problem that we face as a community is a lot of people assign themselves a role which they have no no understanding of and no experience in. I used to be a moderator of MT MTG Salvation when it was blowing up. Now it's kind of dead, but I was a moderator. And people would just assign themselves as experts or something. This guy is the guardian of the Lotus. And any Lotus that is being sold, he has to confirm the buyer, the seller, who Rudy sells to an individual who's educated, wealthy, and knows that about the history of this card. Why would this individual have to take a phone call from a random third party person to confirm that he's not going to sell the card? Does this make sense? Like, break it down. I'm selling you uh, my used Acura RDX 2008. I actually would like to sell you that. But anyway, and the person I originally talked to is not interested in the car. The car I'm selling for 6000 He's not interested. He says something is wrong with it. Maybe the autograph signature is not correct on the Acura, or maybe the engine is not right. Then I go to another person. The other person checks out the RDX. He buys it for 10000 And now the first person who I was going to sell it to for 6000 it's going to call the second person to confirm that the second person is not going to sell the RDX back into the market. 
And what buying selling relationship would a random third party who's not a buyer or a seller call the, the buyer to confirm that the buyer is not going to resell the card? Only in MTG Finance do you get this. Only in Magic. Like I saw this a lot in MTG Salvation when I was a moderator. People would just assign themselves a row and say, I'm the expert in X. I'm the expert in Affinity. And then when you have a new design for Affinity, nope, that doesn't work. That card, don't put that card in. It sucks. And it's like you don't you don't have any understanding of the meta. You don't know who his friends are. You don't know what the FNM is like. You don't know why that card's in the deck, but because you're an expert, the self-appointed expert in that, then every affinity idea will be like, oh, that doesn't work. So at the very end of the day, uh, one of the things that I wanted to make clear was you have a lot of pseudo experts. And I will address the ad hominem attacks. I think that ad hominem arguments are very weak, but it is irony. Like the irony should not be lost upon you that the people talking about treating women uh, fairly cheat on women all the time with children multiple times and cheat with their, I assume their underlings. The people who are the most famous magic players who give you advice on how to win GPs, Alex Bercini, are known cheaters banned twice. They are being promoted heavily on Vintage uh, Super League and stuff like that. They, I mean, this is not, this is fact. The people at MTG Finance who are most likely to tell you to buy something do not have the financial capital to actually buy that something in great, great quantities. This has always been true. Rudy represents a danger. And I've always wanted this. If you can talk to talk, walk to walk, show a video of your collection, show a video of everything, because I guarantee you half these yappers do not own a single, this guy, $6,000 for a Black Lotus. Do you think that's a good price? Fake signature, it, it's a great price. The reason I know it's a great price is you can flip it within a few months for 10000 it's a low price. Um, there's no question as to the value of this Lotus. The signature, I'm not going to speak about the signature, but this is beyond the signature. Um, it is beyond, it is a person who, I don't know if they regret not buying the Lotus. I, I don't know why they're so involved in this that they would call the buyer of this card to confirm that the buyer is not going to sell the card in the future. An item is worth what someone's willing to pay for it. Not every item is perfect. You look at used cars. If a item is damaged or not in great condition and it's known or there is suspicion, then the item will have a lesser price tag. The price that Rudy put on the Black Lotus initially was very low. The guy should have bought it. He should have bought it because he could have flipped it for almost 100% profit in a few months. He did not. We all know that Black Lotus is going up, 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 up in price. And to be quite frank, this was a terrible non-buy. I'm going to show you a terrible non-buy on my own very soon, which I, I was talking to um, Edwin when he was here. I should have bought that collection. And I think he's salty. He's salty he didn't buy it. Because now someone else bought it. And obviously this person is very nice that he would field even he would even think about fielding a phone call from a random person asking him not to sell the card he just bought. Regardless, this is an interesting uh, representation of the MTG Finance community. They talk a good talk, but when it comes to paying the money, they don't pay the money. And when they can't pay the money and realize that the they could have made a huge profit on this card. They then now complain about it. And they will stalk you until the end of days. How do I know this? Magic Online Trading League is not very different. I mean, it's the same. We used to have people hold cards that would not, like cards that would not spike or spike. They would wait. They would wait to send a card. And 
because by the time the cards in the quote in the mail are lost or returned to sender, the card may have either gone up or down. And if it goes up, you never get the card. If it goes down, they'll send you <laughs> they'll send you the card. So this is not. I mean, my experience in MTG Finance has not been positive, and I would never want anyone to experience the same things that Rudy or I have. But it's really easy to. But this is pretty extreme when you have a guardian of the lotus who has no. What is his involvement in actually this transaction? If the buyer knows about it, and he does, then that's fine. The buyer made the he took the risk. All investments have risk. This one has a little bit more than other ones, other black lotuses perhaps, but. Nonetheless, it was purchased, and the price tells me everything I need to know about this card. Educated, wealthy, famous individual buys card for a lot more than this guy would have bought it for. So Rudy made out. He made a lot of money. Good, good for him. Anyway, bye guys.